Hi, my name is Jared Newport, a Precision Ag Specialist here at Huron Tractor Exeter. And today I'm at the back plot behind the store. I'm going to talk to you about the importance of high quality driven boundaries. For using different applications like your planting, your section control, autopath, and other Precision Ag features, you want to make sure you have a good quality boundary so that when you're driving your equipment along, you don't accidentally hit something. And behind me today I have a 845R 2025 Gator equipped with Green Star wiring and a G5 display and a 7500 receiver running SFRTK. That way we can have the best quality accuracy with 7 inch accuracy and repeatable long term which John Deere defines as 5 plus years. And now I'm going to show you how to set it all up and drive a boundary. To get started, there's a couple different ways you can go about recording your boundary. Some guys will go just off the outside of your tire, so as long as you keep it along the outside, you're good. In my case, I'd like to be able to see where exactly I'm recording from. So I've set up this bar on the front. I have it extended to a length so when I'm sitting in the cab, I can look out the side and see where this little yardstick's sitting. It's just a simple yardstick from uh, Home Hardware and I have it locked in with a pin. And then I'll lock this in, and I use tape to always make sure it's in the same place every time. And then what you'll need to do for in the cab, you'll need to get the center line here along with the receiver on your cab and measure the exact distance from here to wherever your stick sits down. And then another good practice is for implements, say you got a 12 row planter, 30 inches, while it may have a working width of 30 feet, you might have a little bit of the bar sticking out, you might have uh, markers. So you wanna stick a buffer bar for the exact, well, for half the length it is. That way, when you're going along, say you go around a tree or something, if that bar hits it, you know your planter is gonna hit it. Make sure you give it that space. So first things first, we're gonna need two different measurements in order to properly record with the gator. First thing, we're gonna to need to mark where our axle is on the box, so then we can measure from the axle to the receiver. So I like to use a tape measure, go from the ground, and with some electrical tape, make a mark on the side here to indicate there. And then I would go in the box to the midline and measure from there to the center of the receiver. And I have a little mark on the top. You wanna to go to not the back of it, but the dead center at the top. And then lastly, you want to get the height of the receiver. That way it knows properly how high off the ground it is. So the best way to go about that is if you have a second person that's handy, if you don't, stand on the top of the box and lean over to the side and measure all the way to where the green meets the yellow on the receiver. And then input those in the display. Alrighty, so now that we got our measurements, we'll need to go in the screen and on a Gen 4, Gen 5, we'll go into setup in the bottom left. If you don't have this button, go to menu, application, and then down, and work setup. And in this case, click on your piece of equipment, and then click on it again. And then here, we see our GPS inline offset and GPS height. In our case, our receiver is dead in line, so we don't need to put a lateral offset. So here's our GPS inline offset from the back axle to the receiver, the center of it, type her in, hit OK, then our GPS height, that's from the ground to the midline where the green meets the yellow, hit OK, OK, save, OK, OK, and now we want to double check that the receiver has the exact same height, that way there's no inconsistencies, so you can go to, from your screen, click on the cloud, click on the receiver, and see it in setup, height's 82 inches. Or if you don't have that, go to menu, application, down, Starfire, there, click on setup, and there's your height. And now we want to create our boundary. So ahead of time, you can set up a shortcut button in your shortcut bar and go through it this way. If you don't have this, you can go through menu, applications, fields and boundaries, and then here you can create your client farm field and go through that. 
And if you need to delete it, just hit clear selection. And then you can hit create, create driven boundary. Here's where you can see it. I'll just call it the field name plus boundary. Put your offset to whatever side you're going off of. In my case, the left. In my case, I don't have an implement, so it's just defaults to machine GPS. But if you do have an implement attached, it'll try to go for that first. So make sure you switch it and then type in your offset. Mine's 57 and a half inches, but it always converts it into feet and decimals. And then make sure you move into position before hitting OK, because as soon as you hit that, it's going to start recording. I'll hit OK. My gator's already in position. And now I'll start driving. And you'll notice on the left hand side of the screen, or sorry, the right side of the screen, there's an arrow circling to the right. That is the undo button in case I make a mistake. And then the other one's a redo button in case I want to change that. And at the bottom, if you ever need to snap, there's a pause button. And then only hit the OK button or the save button when you're done recording. I have a tree down, which I'll have to later push back in. That way I can make full use of my field. But I don't, I'll have to drive around it since I can't drive through it. But something I can do on the screen is, I'll drive around it. Once I get fully around, back straight, I'll stop. So now we can see it's behind me. But now there's this squiggle I don't want. So what I can do is hit this undo button and each time it'll remove five meters. So I'll keep doing that until it's straight. Zoom back in here once more. But let's say I did it too many times. I can hit this redo button and it'll bring it back that and it automatically pauses so you can see in the bottom here it says resume now so it stopped recording and as soon as I hit this it snaps the line back to me and now you'll see it's orange meaning it's not autonomy quality but that's not a worry today so now you can see that I'm close it's zoomed in, and you can see that orange dotted line. Get close here and start turning. And then you can see it's like that. And you can save. And it gives you a little report card at the end for how you did. So mine's not atomic quality, so you got that orange, but that's okay. And now I have an SFRTK boundary. All right, now that we're done creating the boundary, we'll go on the display and export the boundary so we can use it see it in op center and use it in other machines and also make sure you save the video and in the link at the in the description at the bottom there'll be a link to a pdf for best practices for creating boundaries okay so to export your boundary once it's done click menu system and then file manager it always takes a second on these and you're going to go to export custom export if you have a USB through there, this Gator has a uh, R modem in it, so it can automatically send to the cloud. Hit next, hit all data, and then we're gonna hit setup and hit the pencil and just send our boundaries. Hit OK, hit next. Current systems, if you have older screens you want to use this with, make sure you click current and legacy and then hit export and you're good to go.